Welcome to A Balanced Life on the Go. I'm Dr. Nicole Lindsay, your host on this podcast, along with Dr. Brian Jeanette. This is a podcast designed to help connect you to a more balanced life on the go. Each week, we will bring you simple, concise, and easy to implement ideas, tips, and strategies to help you connect to better nutrition, movement, and thinking so you can achieve balance in your busy life. Isn't this what life is all about? Trying to achieve balance so that we can be healthy, happy, and live to our fullest potential. We're glad you joined us. Let's get started. What's up, guys? Hi. Welcome. Um, For our Facebook Live, this is uh, Balanced Life on the Go, podcast number seven. Number seven. We are pumped. So we're going to talk about the three biggest postural problems. That's probably the number one question that we get as chiropractors. Number two question. The number one question is whenever we go out and we tell someone that we're chiropractors, they instantly do this. Oh, my neck, can you adjust me? Oh, my back hurts. The next thing that they do is they ask us about posture. It's like, I know I have bad posture, but what can I do about it? Yes. Sit up straight. Stop slouching. Get your shoulders back. How many times did you hear that growing up? Uh, almost never, but if you're really? in a military household, you probably heard it a lot. Chest out, shoulders back, head up, butt in, you know? I heard it quite a bit, and... <laughs> well, my parents have, poor, have terrible posture. I don't know. I guess it was just maybe the generation, you know, my parents, but uh, I find them constantly saying it to my daughter. And nowadays... You're, you're aware of it, though, so... Yeah, I am a chiropractor, right? So I'm aware of it, but it is prevalent in children. You see that, and it will affect the way that their spine grows, It's too. becoming more and more of an issue in our society as... We have tablets as we have. Yep, we're going to talk about all cell phones, that. We have computers, we have all, all of, this. of that. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, it just comes down to your proper posture matters. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about what the three biggest problems look like, ways that you can self check yourself as well. Right so before we go into that, let's talk about your socks. What, uh, what, are, what are they looking like today? So this was an impromptu recording. So I've already worn these socks when we have done a podcast, so they're a repeat. So I did got my old baseball socks okay. on. Okay. We like them. We'll let you wear those. I actually do. These twice. are some of my favorite socks. <laughs> but Don't I, let it happen again. I know, but I feel bad that they're a repeat. I can go put on like footies or something like <laughs> crew socks. That's all right. White Nikes. Okay. So why is posture bad posture such an issue right now? In our society, you started to talk about it, but let's dive into that a little bit more. The the one thing that's becoming so prevalent right now is texting, and what we actually have a new diagnosis for is this text neck problem that we see. Um, you went on the mm-hmm. news, WLOS, WLOS, almost recently within a couple uh, months. It's no, it's actually been it's been a while. It's, it's been, been a over while. a year. Yeah. yeah, and that was my biggest segment. They. They were very happy with the views they got there for the number of people that could relate Mm -hmm. to that forward head posture and see it in their children, see it in each other. Yeah. You know, it's something I see all the time in the office. I probably see it at least five times a week where parents are coming in and being treated for problems that they have and they bring their children, their 13-year-old, their 14-year-old, their 7-year-old, their 8-year-old. And I'll see them sitting in the chairs waiting for their mom or their parent to be done with their treatment, and they're in terrible posture. They're in apps, like, I mean, curl up in a ball, like, what would, I'm 28, and that just looks like it would destroy me for days. It probably would. And the one thing that the parents always inevitably say, they make a comment about technology and how, like, you know, they wish that their kids weren't so addicted to the tablet or the cell phone, but then the other thing that they say is their posture. Yeah. Is I wish they wouldn't sit like that. Right, right. And they they wonder why. You know, they spend hours... And hours on those devices, I know, I watch my daughter do it, and I'm constantly telling her. And that's why you're... Yeah, so that's definitely why it is the way it is. That's one of the biggest reasons, is the overuse and abuse of technology, right? Um, Some of it is genetic. Sometimes we can have these postural patterns from mom to daughter or father to son. Um, There's certain hereditary diseases that happen that can cause... Poor bone mass and certain loss of disc height 
that we see in adolescence. Definitely. A lot. Scoliosis is another example. Yeah. And then, of course, just sitting, you know? I mean, how many people listening to this right now get up, they drive to work, so they're sitting in their car, they get to work, they go to their desk, they sit for eight hours, then they come home and they get back in that car and they drive back home, and then they get home and they sit on the couch. So it's like this this world of sitting, you know, mm-hmm. that's that's definitely another reason why um, it is the way it is. Then another reason is obviously no exercise. It takes muscle to be in good posture. If you don't use it, you lose it. If you don't exercise those muscles, there's no way that those muscles can be strong enough to hold your shoulders back, to hold your head up. Yeah. And to be in that overall good posture. And not enough people exercise. They still, you know, this old school mentality. Everyone is like, I know, I know. I should do it. I should do it. Yeah, I know. I think we need to get on our soapbox a little bit and insert this in here because, you know, it's no exercise is no longer something that we should do. If I had the time, no, it is something that you have to do. And we'll be doing some podcasts on that specifically, but I got to take a step back and like not dive into that just yet. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a pretty hot button issue with me. Yeah. So it is definitely one of the reasons posture is such a problem is lack of exercise, not strengthening our muscles, our postural muscles as well. So, well, what, what happens when you have poor posture? I mean, it's definitely an aesthetic issue, Mm -hmm. right? We have, you know, women that are young that are developing that nursing home hump, you know? Yeah, dowager hump. Yeah. 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 The older men that you see in the grocery store that are... Leaning over. far forward, doing those things. They have, you know, their pelvis is shifted, so they're almost like in a C-shape. They're like shrinking down to the ground. Yeah, they they look like that they got out of their chair, their recliner that they've been in for eight hours, and now they're standing, but yet their body's still in that, that recliner position, position yeah. which is exactly what's happening. Well, know? that goes back to the no exercise part. If you don't use those muscles, those muscles just tighten up, and they they hold you function. in that position. They hold you in that position. In that poor position. Um, that's a question we get, too, about mattresses a lot, and I know this is going off topic, but um, a lot of people will say, what's the best mattress? And really, if you think about it, if you have a, a soft, a very soft mattress, and you are sitting in a chair all day, and you're in this C-shaped position that we're talking about, and then you go to bed at night, if your mattress isn't firm, it's going to conform to that shape, which is going to hold your muscles in that position even more. And then you're waking up with back pain and neck pain, and it's it's not a good thing. I think we'll do another podcast on mattresses because I hear this all the time. My mattress was eight hundred dollars, and it's the best mattress yeah, I've ever had. Same here. And same here. We have patients that say I have a five thousand dollar mattress, and I can't sleep. Yeah, okay. let us save you some money yeah. on that. So we're, we're stay gonna, tuned for another podcast on that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So poor posture can affect definitely from an aesthetic standpoint. It it it, it doesn't look so appealing, um, but there's some other effects to poor posture. It affects how your body functions in daily life. Uh, your risk of injury when you exercise if your posture is rockets. Yeah, and you go into the gym and you are um, lifting heavy weight or you're running three, four, five miles on postural positions that are not healthy, healthy. then you're going to grind down your bones unevenly. It's like, you know, taking a car and driving that car uh, out of alignment. You can do it, right? But... What's going to happen if you drive that car 70 miles per hour day in and day out for a year out of alignment? What's going to happen? Uh, You're going to get a new car because that car is going to break down. The tires are going to start rubbing and wearing out a certain pattern, the shocks, the bearings. Then it's going to start wobbling, and and we know not to do this, right? Yeah. So that's how our body is, and that's why we end up with We all ignore things on our body, but we never ignore things on our car. Right. Yeah. I know. Why is that? The the other thing that poor posture does is when you do have poor posture and say you do have an injury, say you are in pain, it actually makes you more susceptible to experiencing that pain, to be more sensitive to that pain. Yeah, it sure does. So it, it ultimately, it affects so many things. Most importantly, poor posture can affect your health, believe it or not. That's, um, that's something there's more and more research coming out showing that. 
That's not just us crazy chiropractors uh, making that up. Um, Nobel Peace Prize recipient Dr. Roger Sperry, he says that the spine is the motor that drives the brain, which, of course, we know that as chiropractors. But according to his research, 90% of the stimulation and nutrition to the brain is generated by the movement of the spine. 90% is generated by the movement of the spine. Only 10% of your brain's energy goes into thinking, metabolism, immunity, healing. So 90%. So think about that. Think about really what that means. Let's take a body part. Uh, let's say your shoulder. Okay, this is one of the common areas that we see that we start losing range of motion. And let's say you can't lift that arm as high as what you used to be able to do. So because that arm is not moving at 100%, that lack of movement is going to impair the messages going back to your brain. It's going to affect how your brain is functioning, how much oxygen, nutrition, blood flow is actually coming to the brain because that shoulder is not moving mm -hmm. properly. It's like an artery that's 80%, 90% clogged. It's still, you know, it's still there. I can still, you know, move it if I needed to. I could, you know, eat my cereal or whatever, use a fork or a knife, but I'm not getting as much blood to my heart that happens. And after a while, eventually, you know, that leads to coronary artery disease, uh, heart attacks, things like that. Um, this is the same thing. This leads to decreased input to your brain. And if you're not getting enough input from that body part to your brain, your brain's not going to give any input down to your shoulder. Exactly. And so then that shoulder is going to get worse and worse and worse through the whole, whole thing. So there, there are, that, that's, there's are the reasons that poor posture um, is very important and matters. Those are the, the main reasons, um, or that's what poor posture can really affect in your body. So let's talk about the three most common postural problems. The first one that we talked about is this anterior pelvic tilt. Is this, your pelvis likes to move what we say interdependent of your spine. It's like you watch a salsa dancer, it's like their whole top half is not moving at all, and then their pelvis is like going crazy. It's like a tornado, you know? They're able to move their pelvis separately from their spine, and we like that. Why? It's like if you've got any golfers here or any baseball players, all the power comes from the hips. And if you don't have that proper alignment of that pelvis, you're not going to have, if you're an athlete, you're not going to have as much power output. Um, if you are, say, a non-athlete, I qualify athlete as anybody that moves around and uses their body for a living. If you make money based on your body having to function and having to move day in and day out, so probably excluding desk workers, uh, you're an athlete for a living. And it's so important to have this healthy balance. What happens with us is this anterior pelvic tilt is these hips. If you put your hands on top of your hips right here, and they should be pretty straight, right? But it starts to tip forward, and then we get what you call that sway back. Sway back. I call it shelf butt. Or that. Mm -hmm. That goes like that. And it puts so much extra added pressure on the joints of your lower back and spine that those wear out. And so we hear this all the time. It says, I have arthritis in my back. My doctor told me I have arthritis. We have arthritis because you're putting 10 times the amount of pressure on those joints that they're designed to do. Take a little Toyota Prius and then you tow 10,000 pounds with it. It's probably not going to wear. It's probably not, probably not going to last as long as the truck that's meant to tow 10,000 pounds. Yeah, that Prius is going to develop arthritis. It's major <laughs> arthritis. Junkyard arthritis. Exactly. So there's actually a way that you can test yourself to see if you have pelvic anterior tilt. And how you're going to do that, we're going to explain that. Um, you're going to stand up against the wall. And you are going to... Put your feet about two inches from the floor. And you're going to try and put your shoulders square and against the wall. And then you're going to take one of your arms and your hands and put that, place that in the small of your back. So if your hand 
goes back there freely and can move around, then you are too, your pelvis is too far forward. You have anterior tilt. Mine gets a little stuck. That's the way it should be. If your hand gets stuck and you can't spin it around and move it around, then your posture's normal there. Or if you can slide it all the way through. Yes. That's not good. We that's don't want that. That's not good either. Yeah. yeah. So that's just a simple check that you can do yourself. So if you're finding that in your posture, then that's a problem. And that <clears> means that you should probably go to your chiropractor and have them check your posture and your pelvis um, to, to get a more thorough evaluation. Yeah, and absolutely. And we can give you exercises. We can give you stretches to, to really combat that pretty easy. And you'll see a big change in your overall function and the way that you just move throughout yeah. the day. Yeah, because there's usually a reason. There's something that you're doing all day long um, that you've been doing for years as to why it's there. So we can help you break those patterns. Mm -hmm. So the second postural problem is what we call forward head posture or text neck. And this is the one that we see in kids more and more. We see it in a lot of adults, too. Starting to see it a lot, yeah. Starting to see it a lot, a lot of adults. Adult, listen, adults like to say that kids are addicted to yeah. technology, but I think they we all know too. that they're just as addicted to technology. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So, I mean, kids learn from watching mom and dad, you know? They mm -hmm. don't learn from you telling them to do something. They learn from watching you. So, yes. Um, so, yes, this forward, it, this is the worst type of postural problem, in my opinion, because it greatly can affect the function of your brain and your spinal cord. So you should have a normal curve in your spine that should met in your cervical spine that should measure between 40 and 45 degrees. And it's called a lordotic curve. So when you have this forward head posture, your head's gone forward in front of your shoulders. And this puts an unbelievable amount of pressure on the spine. In, in the cervical spine and the upper thoracic. And every inch forward that your head is, that's an extra 10 pounds of weight you're carrying on your lower back. So ultimately, this postural problem affects your whole entire spine. More importantly- Wherever your head goes, your body goes. Exactly. Um, part of your brainstem dips down into that part of the curve. So it's the, the curve is there to protect your brain. Spinal nerves come off of that part of the spinal cord and come out and they go to every region of the body. So when you lose that curve as well, you're, you're getting pressure on the brain stem and potentially on those nerves that are coming out, going down into your arms. We oftentimes see numbness and tingling, headaches, neck pain, a lot of issues like that. Mm -hmm. So we talked about anterior pelvic tilt and how that could increase the curve in your lumbar spine. And now we talked about forward head posture, which can decrease the curve in your cervical spine. The last thing that we're going to talk about is this rounded shoulder type of bad posture where our shoulders are rounded forward, our chest is caved in. You can really see, and this goes, this goes pretty hand in hand with forward head posture as well. It's really hard to have this forward head posture without having this rounded mm -hmm. shoulder thing happen. What happens with this is, you see this a lot in in chiropractors, this, chiropractors, yeah, <laughs> being here in this position, mm -hmm. um, desk workers who are in this position, or drivers who are in this position, anybody that is very frontal dominant when they do anything, um, whether you read a book, whether you're cooking, whether you're doing anything, lifting weights, lifting weights, see a lot of uh, spending too much time on gym, these muscles, gym bros doing chest day five days a week. You know, they we have so much musculature that's built up in the front, or maybe not too much musculature, but this musculature gets short mm -hmm. and tight because it's too weak and we have weakness in our back as well. And that doesn't allow us to pull our shoulders back. I hear it all the time. Patients are like, I know I have bad posture, but then like when I stand up and I roll my shoulders back, it feels so good, but I can't stay there. Yes. So yeah, that is definitely goes hand in hand with that heavy head shifting forward. Um, going back to the forward head posture, there's a way that you can self check this too. And, um, basically what you're going to do is stand in the mirror in front of a mirror and you're going to go to the side and basically you should be able to draw a line from the center of your shoulder and go all the way up. 
and that line should go through the center of your ear when you go to the side. It's easier if you have somebody doing this with you that can actually look at you. Or somebody that can take a picture. And there's there's apps out there, and, and here at the office we have an app for that too. Yes. So we can use technology to decide if you have a technology-based... We'll use technology instance. in the proper position though. Oh, so, it's... Um, and yeah. there's actually apps that you can get for your phone, and we'll actually put them in the show notes um, for this podcast, but you can load that on your phone so that your phone has to be at a certain angle when you're using it for an extended period of time or it will shut off. I didn't know that. That's oh, cool. Oh, I taught you something. You just taught me something. So, yes. So it. that can really help your posture. Um, there's also some stretchbreak.com. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of apps as well that can really help you remember to get up It'll show up on your screen. You can set it up to show up every few minutes, every hour, and you can program what exercises and stretches you want to, it to tell you to do, and that way you're reminded to do it. I don't have time for that. I have eight hours of the day, and I work nine of those eight hours. I don't have time for that. That's what we hear. So three seconds is all it takes to do a, a stretch, you know, and then your next break, do another three second stretch. It doesn't have to be a 20 minute break that you're taking. Exactly. It only takes a couple minutes or seconds. Small so, steps. Small steps. So that's for forward head posture. Um, rounded shoulders, a way that you can check yourself there is basically putting yourself um, up against a wall again and examining your posture. Your shoulders should hit the, the walls when you're standing straight up against the wall. If they're coming far forward in front of you, then you have the rounded shoulders. I mean, you can pretty much see that. Yeah. A lot of people notice that too. As we start to get older, we start to lose that. We talk about shoulder. We start to lose that kind of sensory input into the brain and the brain stops sending signals down so our shoulder gets weak. The other thing that that happens is when we have forward head posture, we lose that range of motion, right? So when you're young, you're able to get your hand all the way above your head, get that top cup from the highest shelf in the kitchen, whatever it may be, top closet. And then as we get older, all we say, I hear it all the time, it's I have arthritis or, you know, this, this and that is the reason why I can't raise my head above my hand. Well, we're meant to do that. We're absolutely meant to raise our hand above our head. That's why, that's why we're born with our hands above our head. Like that's why we can yeah, do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so this round, this rounded shoulder forward shoulder position really blocks that shoulder. Really blocks that arm mm-hmm. from being able to raise above my head if it's really far rounded. Yeah, and you know, you take a young person that's starting at the gym, and they already have this rounded forward posture, and they go and they do their first week or two weeks. And they start lifting weights, they do some overhead presses or something out in front and weight, and then they impinge a nerve in this area and end up with numbness and tingling down their arm, not because they shouldn't work out, but because they they had a postural problem that wasn't addressed and now they got injured, which we see all too often and it's it's a shame because now they, they're afraid to work out. We're gonna do another podcast on shoulder shoulder issues alone because there's just so many and especially if you have a shoulder problem go see your chiropractor first yes definitely before you're told you need rotator cuff surgery or uh, any kind of surgery Um, so these are the three biggest postural problems and if you identify them on you then definitely take that serious and work to correct that find out what you can do so that it's not affecting your health so it's not setting you up for injury later on. So it's not decreasing the amount of um, oxygen and nutrients to your brain. We need all the help we can get there. So we don't, we don't wanna stop that from happening. Um, and of course, as always on our podcast, we always wanna give you one thing to work on. Our podcast is helping you create this balance in your life, in your busy life, while on the go. And it can be done, right? So, Dr. Brian, what's the one thing? So I want to leave you guys with the only bad posture is the posture that we spend too much time in. And our bodies are capable of this vast amount of movement, variable movement. 
So today, the one thing, take the three seconds that Dr. Nicole said that it would take and get in a different position that you're used to, that, or that, excuse me, that you're not used to. Be in a different position for three seconds and then go back to what you're doing before. You are capable of doing so much more movement than you know, and our brain shuts down when we don't move. I love that. I love that. Listen, if we look at two cells underneath of a microscope and one's alive and one's dead, what's the difference between the two? One's moving. Movement. Life is movement, guys. So when you stop moving your body or your joints stop moving, your limbs, it's going to lead to a problem. So do something abnormal with your body. Get up and dance. Put some music on. Stretch. Just move in a different way. Boom. Move in a different way. Love it. Okay. Let us know if you have any questions or we can help you here at Back in Balance.